In addition to the refusal to release vital information, we have now had an astonishing four occasions on which senior civil servants have come to the committee and given oral evidence and then have had to write to the committee subsequently to correct misleading statements which have been given in a public session. That is simply not good enough. Presiding officer, it is essential to the work of the committee that the legal advice is made available to us. I hope that the Scottish Parliament will agree today to support my call for its publication. And if we are successful in winning the vote later this afternoon, I would expect the Scottish Government to respect the parliamentary vote and produce the missing documentation as a matter of urgency, and in so doing, fulfil all the promises that have been made by the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister to be open and cooperative with this inquiry. To do otherwise, presiding officer, would be unforgivable. I move the motion in my name. Thank you. And I call on the Cabinet Secretary, John Swinney, to speak to and move Amendment 23218.2. Mr Swinney. Senator officer, I rise to move the amendment that stands in my name. Scots law provides that any person who seeks legal advice has the benefit of confidential communications with their lawyer. This is an important and well-established legal principle. In the same way, legal professional privilege is part of the normal operation of the Scottish Government. It supports good government by allowing ministers and officials to be informed by appropriate and full legal input when making decisions. Legal privilege is inherent to the functioning of good government and the rule of law. It is important that the legal advice which ministers and their officials receive is full and frank and not affected by concerns about it subsequently becoming public. The principle of legal privilege has been upheld and respected by successive Scottish and United Kingdom governments of different political colours on a range of topics and including on very high profile issues. This includes recently the Conservative-led United Kingdom Government in relation to issues in connection with Brexit. Governments operate on the principle that legal privilege applies and this allows for open and candid legal advice to be taken to inform the process of decision making. Legal advice does not constitute a democratically taken decision. If Mr Johnson would forgive me, I need to make a bit of progress. I've got a lot of ground to cover. It is advice that informs that decision it is the decision itself that the government is accountable for. And in the case at the centre of this debate today, the handling of the judicial review, the Scottish Government's decision making, essentially its legal position in the case, is set out in the pleadings in the case informed by the legal advice that we have taken. These pleadings have already been shared with the committee, including various changes and developments that took place during the handling of the case as set out in a detailed timeline document, again, which has been made available to the committee. This is one aspect of the information that the Scottish Government has provided to the committee in making available the documentation that the committee has requested. Maintaining legal professional privilege has not prevented the government from providing the committee with over a thousand pages of relevant material. Scottish Government witnesses have provided over 14 hours of oral evidence to date. We are working to provide more material to the committee and have set out our intention to initiate legal proceedings seeking to allow the release of further documents that we believe the committee should receive. The First Minister and myself have both personally provided written evidence and the First Minister has made clear her willingness to attend the committee in person when asked. Our cooperation has also included the Lord Advocate making himself available to provide oral evidence to the committee on relevant matters. He has already attended committee on the 8th of September and will be attending again next week. The Lord Advocate gave detailed answers on the issues at the heart of this debate at committee. He explained, and I quote, It is really important to say that the assertion of legal professional privilege is routine. Its waiver is exceptionally rare. And it happens against the background of very strong reasons of public policy. For If Mr Mundell would allow me to finish the quote, and then I will give way to him. Its waiver is exceptionally rare, and it happens against the background of very strong reasons of public policy for maintaining that confidentiality, which facilitates and encourages the seeking and receipt of legal advice by policymakers and ministers on a basis of absolute candour. In the context of a litigation, where inevitably the government's previous legal position may come under scrutiny and test, 
it is particularly important that the government is not disincentivised from seeking and obtaining legal advice on the basis of absolute candour. It is also fair to say that the more an issue is a matter of live political debate, the greater is the risk that a waiver of privilege would undermine that. That's the end of the Lord Advocate's quote, and I'll give way to Mr Mundell. Oliver Mundell. I, I thank the Deputy First Minister for taking an intervention. Does he honestly think that in this case the circumstances are routine? Does he not think this is exactly the sort of exception where the public interest test kicks in? I, I think this is, if, if Mr Mundell looks at the examples where the government has waived legal pr professional privilege, they have been on major issues of public policy in relation to historic child abuse or contaminated blood uh, or, or other issues of that nature. This is an issue of litigation. And the point the Lord Advocate made, no, I'm, I'm, answer, I'm answering the intervention. And the point the Lord Advocate made in the quote that I've read out is that this is, is particularly relevant in a situation where matters are the subject of litigation for the principle of legal professional privilege to be applied. The government, uh, I'm afraid I'll, I'll have to make some further uh, progress. The government is frequently involved in litigation and decision-making as part of normal good government. As the Lord Advocate noted in his evidence, it is crucial that decisions can be taken with the benefit of full and frank legal advice. If the government were to waive its privilege in this case, I would be concerned that in any future high-profile litigation involving the government, ministers might not be able to benefit from advice given on a full and frank basis, should there be a fear that advice might be published. All of us surely must recognise the benefits for public policy and decision making for the government to be able to benefit from being able to take legal advice which is robust, which considers all possibilities and weighs up all considerations. None of us surely want public policy and decision making to fall victim to legal advice that errs on the side of caution for the fear of its publication. The strength of legal privilege stems from a consistent application by a client, in this case the government, across its legal communications. Picking and choosing what to make public does not assist decision makers make sound, reasonable decisions or assist Parliament and the public to hold a government to account. I have carefully considered the request from the committee that the Scottish Government waive legal privilege in this instance. I have concluded that the public interest in maintaining the privilege including the negative impacts of waiving privilege for all areas of government operation, outweighs any perceived public interest in disclosing legally privileged material. The Scottish Government continue to assert legal professional privilege in relation to the work of the committee. This will not prevent us from continuing to cooperate with the committee's work in the supply of documentation and the provision of witnesses. That has been the commitment of the government throughout this process, and it will remain so for the remainder of this inquiry. Thank you very much, Cabinet Secretary.